Eric Lerner has been developing uh, concepts for fusion with a dense plasma focus since 1984, uh, working with uh, uh, folks at the Stevens Institute of Technology and uh, working on preliminary contracts uh, from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory uh, uh, which, uh, from NASA to work with University of Illinois, Texas A&M to do some preliminary experiments. And now he'll talk a bit more about our ongoing uh, experiment uh, at our lab just a few miles away from here. Eric? Thanks, Derek. Uh, yeah, well, what I'm talking about is what we call focus fusion, which we see as the fastest way to cheap, clean, inexhaustible energy. So um, let me go back to that. What is focus fusion? Well, focus fusion is an approach to fusion that uses a device called the dense plasma focus and uses the fuel, hydrogen plus boron fuel. So that combination is what we've called focus fusion. Now, what we're doing um, is trying in approximately the next eight months to a year, in the course of 2011, to demonstrate the scientific feasibility of this approach to demonstrate that we can get enough energy out relative to the energy we put in that feasible engineering solutions could give us net energy production. And if we success successful in doing that, we intend to next go on to develop a prototype 5 megawatt fusion electric generator within approximately the next four years a much bigger project than what we're doing because it involves all the engineering work to produce something that actually works repetitively and over a long lifetime. During that same period, we intend to develop spin-off technologies uh, that are not fusion and that might help us along during that period of, of demonstrating a, a fusion prototype such as extremely high uh, energy x-ray sources that could be used for non-destructive <coughs> inspection and testing. During the same period, like starting now? During that, that, that period in which we're doing development. Right now we're doing pure research. Now, why are we excited, you know, other people are excited about PV-11 hydrogen boron? Well, the most exciting thing about hydrogen boron is that when you heat hydrogen, the hydrogen nucleus is a proton, plus boron-11, which is the most common natural form of boron, they briefly fuse into a carbon atom, a nucleus, which is too excited to stay together. And it gets so excited that it splits into three helium nuclei and releases a great deal of energy. The significant thing about this is that these are all charged particles that are released. In the main reaction, this is the main reaction, <coughs> excuse me, there are no neutrons released. So what does that mean? It means that we can, since charged particles in motion is electricity, that's what electricity is, we can use direct conversion, which I'll talk about in a moment, to produce electricity. And that's different than what we've been doing since Edison. Because since Edison, we've been using a heat source to boil water, to produce steam, to turn a turbine, to turn a generator. And that's very expensive. There's no way to make it cheaper. So this way could potentially lead to a tenfold reduction in the cost of generating electricity below the cheapest source now, which happens to be coal. Um, we have an abundant fuel, this is nuclear <coughs> energy, so a small amount of fuel goes a long way. Um, the resources of boron, obviously hydrogen comes from water, the resources of boron will last us billions of years. It's safe. Because we're not producing neutrons in the primary, we don't get radioactive waste. We produce a small number, about one five hundredth of the reactions 
produce neutrons because B11 will react with some of this helium that's still trapped and will produce a neutron. But this is such a feeble neutron that no radioactive waste will be produced. And the radioactivity that is produced is so short-lived that we can open this machine, a future, not our machine, a future ge uh, power generator, nine hours after it's turned off, you walk in and maintain it without any protection and you won't be exposed to anything over the background. Well, what's the catch? Why isn't everybody doing PB11? The catch is you require more than 100 keV of energy, that's the equivalent of a billion degrees, to ignite this fuel. That's more, that's 100 times the temperature in the center of the sun. And it's twice as much as the temperature that's being used to burn the most popular fuel, which is deuterium plus tritium. You also get a high X-ray emission, because X-ray emission is proportional to the, sec uh, to the square of the number of charges. So boron emits X-ray radiation 25 times faster than the isotopes of helium. And that tends to cool down your plasma. So this has discouraged people. But we feel that we've found ways to get around both of those problems. <coughs> now, this is sort of an artist's conception of what the core of a generator would look like. Um, but before I get to this, actually, this would be a good time to explain what this device is, the plasma focus. We made a little animation with the help of uh, Torf Greek, who lives in Norway. Okay. This is what the core of a dense plasma focus. Dense plasma focus consists of two electrodes, cylindrical electrodes. The outer electrode is generally consists of uh, copper rods, and the inner electrode is one solid rod with a hole in the middle of it. Okay, go on. That's a close-up of our electrodes, which are about this much across. They're placed inside a vacuum chamber, and we get electricity from a set of capacitors. You can go on. And the capacitors dump energy into our fuel in a few microseconds. Go ahead. And this forms a sheet of electricity, which moves down the barrel of these coaxial and forms a dense pinch called the plasma focus. What happens is instabilities form dense filaments, and they fountain inwards and merge into a single filament, which twists itself up like a over-tense telephone wire, and finally forms a very small plasmoid, which contains most of the energy that's been fed into the device. Plasmoid shrinks down to the order of tens of microns, and a further instability causes it to produce beams of energy. Stop. One beam of energy is electrons, and the other beam is ions. The electrons interact with the plasmoid and heat it up so fast that we have fusion reactions occurring, as is shown by this model. So, basically, what we're doing, which is very different in the dense plasma focus than other fusion devices, is we're not trying to fight the plasma and make it remain stable, which is what almost everybody else in the fusion business is doing. The dense plasma focus starts from the idea that plasmas, and plasma is the basic matter, and most of the matter in the universe is in plasma form, are inherently unstable. Because if you have currents running through a plasma, those currents are running in the same direction. They create magnetic fields that tend to pinch them together. So they inherently want to become inhomogeneous 
very complicated and pinched, which is good for us because otherwise our universe would have been a very dull place and none of us would exist. So what we're using is a natural process that exists in quasars, in solar flares, uh, even in our own atmosphere in a form of lightning called atmospheric sprites. To guide these instabilities so each instability <coughs> concentrates the energy further. That's one advantage of this device. And by the way, this device has been around for a long time, uh, for over 40 years, but has been terrifically underfunded for all that time. Dozens of groups around the world have worked on it because it's so economical to build. But the amount of funding that's gone to this is probably one one thousandth what's gone to the uh, tokamak idea. The second advantage is that we're producing plasma which is so high density we don't have to confine it for a very long time. So what we're creating is something that's what we call metastable rather than absolutely stable. Again, we're not trying to make a plasma do what it doesn't want to do. Quantitatively, we have to trap the plasma <laughs> so it goes around in a circle a few thousand times. Most plasma devices, fusion devices, have to trap it so it goes around hundreds of millions of times. That's because the denser it is, the faster it burns, so we don't need as much time. Just to give you some idea of what we mean by direct conversion, <coughs> these are ideas that we patented uh, a while ago in the United States and we're trying to patent in other parts of the world. The energy comes out in two forms. One is the form of a dense beam of ions. This has been observed by us and by many other observers. This pulsed beam of ions can actually be trapped, this is a simplification, in a series of coils, high-tech sort of transformer that captures the energy in a wire and feeds it to a set of capacitors that will store it. Part of that energy will go back to the next firing cycle and part of it will be leaked out to the grid where it will be converted to AC. Another part of the energy comes out as an intense X-ray burst. And that's going to be absorbed in this rather complicated onion-like affair, which is a multi-layered photoelectric device. We can make it very multi-layered and very high efficiency because it's so small. This whole region here is less than a few feet across. Now there are actually other groups working on <coughs> PB11 fuel. As far as we know, they're all in the, the other two groups are both in the United States. We don't know of people elsewhere working on this for whatever reason. Uh, one is a company called Trialpha, which is backed by originally by Paul Allen and now also by Goldman Sachs. They have a machine called the Field Reverse Configuration. And then there's another company called EMC Squared, which has a, a device called the Inertial Electric Confinement and they're getting some money from the Navy. Uh, we've gotten much less money initially from NASA. NASA unfortunately was ordered to get out of the fusion business in 01, and so neither we nor anybody else has gotten money from them since. And since then we've been funded purely by private investment. Um, so although they're ahead of us considerably in the financial race, we're considerably ahead of them in the technical race. Um, and this sort of encapsulates it. Um, this shows the logarithm of the temperature in electron volts. And this is the logarithm of the product of the density and the confinement time. 